Listen to this quote. It's from a former Muslim who said, and I quote, Muslims are normally good people like everyone else. But then they read the Quran. Then they become a killing machine. The woman who said that knows what she's talking about. She's a former Muslim herself who's now facing death threats for spreading the truth about Islam. Dale Hurd, bring, Dale Hurd brings us her powerful story from the nation of Sweden. This woman is on a mission. She's not a Muslim, and her Muslim dress is a disguise. Her mission is for Muslims to know what is in the Quran, because she says if more Muslims knew what was in the Quran, more would leave Islam. Mona Walter came to Sweden from Somalia as a war refugee when she was 19. She says she was excited about joining a modern European nation with equal rights for women. But as a young Muslim woman, that was not the Sweden she encountered. In fact, she says it was in Sweden where she first experienced radical Islam on a daily basis. I discovered Islam here in Sweden. In Somalia, you're, not, you're just a Muslim. You're just born into Muslim country without knowing the Quran. But when you come to Sweden, then you go to mosque. And there is a Quran, so you have to cover yourself, you have to be a good Muslim. Walter says she grew up in Somalia never having read the Quran. So I didn't understand what I was part of. I didn't know who Muhammad was. I didn't know who Allah was. So when I found out, I was, I was upset. I was sad and I was disappointed. She says she discovered that Allah is a God who hates and that Islam is not a religion of peace. It's about um, hating and killing those who disagree with Islam. It's about conquering. Muhammad, he was uh, immoral. He was a uh, bloodthirsty man. He was a terrible man. And they can read that in his uh, biography, what he did to Jews, how he raped women, how he kill people. I mean, he killed everyone who didn't agree with him. Discouraged, she left Islam and became an atheist. Until one day, a family relative encouraged her to read the Bible. She still remembers the first time she read Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, where Jesus said to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It was very strange for me, love your enemy, because in Islam you have to kill your enemy. Kill your enemy and kill everyone who refused Islam. But Jesus Christ, it was, it was all about love and peace and forgiveness and tolerance. And for some reason, I needed that. She went to see Pastor Faoud Rasho, a Syrian immigrant who ministers to former Muslims in Sweden. She started to believe and she came to me. Uh, from, uh, uh, that was the beginning of her, uh, her uh, uh, trusting. I, I was so happy. I, I, was, I was filled with, with joy. Then I accepted Jesus Christ. Mona says the Lord gave her a burden for Muslims who still do not know the truth about Islam. And she began to copy verses from the Quran and hand them out on the street to Muslim women. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they become very upset. And I just uh, uh, told that you know that your husband, he have a right to beat you if you don't obey him. And say, no, he does not say that. Yes, it says that. I thought that if I tell them about, about Muhammad and about Quran and this uh, God of Islam who, who hates, who kill, who discriminates women, maybe they will have a choice and leave. But in politically correct Sweden, Mona Walter has come under attack for simply telling Muslims what is in the Quran. And I've been called Islamophobe and yeah, you, you've been bought, you're a house nigger and stuff like that, terrible things. She has also been called a racist. Walter warns that Islamic radicalism is a serious threat in Sweden and says Swedish society should care more about women trapped in Islam. They will think like, oh, we, we're in Sweden. We have freedom of religion. But Muslim women don't have a freedom of religion. They, they live under the law of Allah, not under the Swedish law. 
So they will suppose everyone have a freedom of religion. We don't have. We don't have freedom of religion. It's not for Muslim women. It's for, for everyone else. She lives under death threats and sometimes travels with police protection. She wanted to show us Muslim areas around Gothenburg, but had to first dress as a Muslim. She believes if she were to show her face, she would be attacked. I never go to those area just to be in me, just to be in flesh and blood, Mona. I never get out of there alive. I mean, Muslim are normally good people, like, like everyone else. But when they, when they read Quran, then they become a killing machine. This so-called ISIS or Al-Shabaab or Boko Haram, they're not like, they're not extremists, they're not uh, fanatical or they're just a good Muslim. Good Muslim who follow uh, the teachings of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, he did that. He, they do just what he did. Walter now uses videos and speaking appearances to spread her message. And she says she won't stop, even though her life is in danger. Dale heard CBN News in Gothenburg, Sweden. You're an amazing, you're an Islamophobe. If you tell what's in the Quran, uh, you're a, give, guilty of hate speech if you pass out quotes from the Quran. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're not hating anybody, but there's a little booklet here that has been made available to us called Islam, Religion of Peace or War. It is fantastic. It has direct quotes from the Quran direct quotes from the Hadith, uh, carefully researched uh, biographical information about Muhammad, what he did, who he was, what he believed, and it's all here. And so it's, it's also beautifully pictorial. It has lovely pictures in it uh, about various places and things. And uh, you wonder what ISIS is and what's going on in the world, we'll give this to you. Now, there's something I want to tell you, and I want you to mark this down. The God of the Bible, the God of the Bible has a name. It is not Allah. It is not Allah. I have said that I thought Allah came from Hubal, who was the moon god of Mecca. Others have said it's a Phoenician, uh, it's a derivation of Baal. But the God of the Bible has a name. And we say, the psalm says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Well, we translate it unto the Lord. But what is the Lord? His name is, in Hebrew, he who causes everything to be. That's what he is. The God of the Bible is the one who caused everything else in the universe to be. He's the creator of the entire universe. And the name Yahweh is Hebrew, a hephil, for he who causes to be. It's the, the verb to be, but it's he who causes. And that's what his name is. So he said, that's my name. My name is he who causes everything to be. I'm not Allah. I am Yahweh. So there's a difference. And one of the God of the Bible is the one who Jesus Christ called the Father. And he said, here's what the Father tells you. Love your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for those. Pray for them. For well, then you'll be like your Father in heaven who does good to the evil and to the, to the just. So just keep in mind when we're talking about those things. But look, we'll give this to you if you, you want to call in or write in Islam. You need to know this. I mean, this thing is uh, something else. A Princeton survey came out and said Islam is faster growing than Christianity. It's not true. Christianity is the fastest growing religion in the world. Still is. And Islam is not growing as fast as some of these proponents would like to say. Islam, religion of peace or war. What is it? Terry? Terry? 